Scattering Part 2. Now it's important to make the distinction between uh, scattering and absorption. So let's say we have a light source and the light is passing through a cloud. Some of the light uh, is scattered away from the viewer and some of the light is actually absorbed. So the energy in that case is actually absorbed. Um, and so we also have a reduction of the uh, light by absorption. And uh, in this example, say 40% of the light is scattered uh, out of the line of sight of the viewer and 10% of the light is uh, absorbed by the particles. And so we have a resulting 50% uh, uh, of the light passes through the cloud uh, to the viewer. Now, um, it's not always easy to um, uh, realize what is going on in terms of what's due uh, to scattering, and what's due to absorption. Uh, so the uh, bottom of uh, clouds is often dark, and that's mostly because the uh, cloud uh, above is scattering light, and so the light doesn't reach the bottom of the cloud. On the other hand, you uh, could have something like dark uh, smoke. Uh, in this case, the um, smoke particles uh, are absorbing uh, the light, so most of the um, reduction of the, the darkness is due to absorption. Now, we can talk about the combined effect of just how much the transmitted light is reduced uh, due to the combination of absorption and scattering, and this is called extinction. So if we have 40% of the light scattered and 10% of it uh, absorbed, then we have 50% extinction. Uh, but it's also 50% extinction if uh, only a small amount of the light is scattered, most of it uh, passes uh, without being scattered. On the other hand, if there's a large amount of absorption, then uh, if it's 40% absorption, 10% scattering, then again, this is 50% extinction. And these two clouds would look equally dark, uh, even though the uh, processes going on within the clouds are uh, somewhat different. There's a principle called uh, Beer's Law, which says that the intensity of transmitted light decreases exponentially with the distance through which the light travels. So if we have the light that passes through this cloud that has 50% um, extinction, then if instead of going through one cloud, if it goes through twice as much cloud, or you can think of it as two clouds, then it gets uh, reduced by 50% in the first cloud, and then that gets reduced by another 50% in the second cloud, and that's a reduction. So the resulting light is only 25% of the original intensity. In other words, it gets cut in half, and then that gets cut in half again in this uh, simple example. Now, uh, extinction, whether it's due to uh, scattering or absorption, uh, can result in cast shadows. So uh, we see the cast shadows of the clouds on the ground. Um, this other photo, we have a uh, smoke from a rocket uh, that is um, seen from uh, high up. And so this column of uh, smoke you see it's casting a shadow um, on the top of these uh, uh, clouds. We can also have form shadows uh, due to extinction. So as I mentioned, the bottoms of uh, clouds are often uh, dark, and we can think of this as a form shadow due to the scattering of light by the uh, cloud above it. Uh, also in something like uh, milk. So the side of the milk away from the uh, light source will be uh, darker, and so this is a form shadow uh, due to uh, primarily scattering. 
Now, another type of shadow that can occur is when an object blocks the light which is passing into a scattering volume. Like uh, in this case, we have the trees are casting um, shadows into uh, the fog. And so we see these um, rays or um, fog shadows. Uh, another case here, we have a building and the shadow of the building is actually being cast into uh, the fog. A more common situation is these uh, sun rays that you see uh, when light is passing uh, through openings in clouds. And so the uh, clouds are casting shadows into uh, some uh, fog. Now, these uh, sun rays, you see them uh, fanning out. It's important to realize the sun is extremely far away, so uh, this effect of seeing it fanning out is entirely due to um, linear perspective. So uh, you realize the same fanning out uh, appears if we look down a long tunnel and see parallel uh, lines. Well, scattering uh, is not entirely random. Uh, the direction that light is uh, scattered, uh, well, sometimes it's scattered more in the forward direction, sometimes it's scattered um, more or less in the backward direction. It depends on the type of scattering. With Rayleigh scattering, uh, the strongest scattering is in the forward direction and in the backwards direction, and it's least in the side to side direction. In other words, it's weakest 90 degrees uh, from the light source and the uh, uh, whatever is scattering, the cloud that's uh, doing the scattering. One um, example of this is uh, on a very clear day, if you look around in the sky, uh, the darkest part of the sky tends to be 90 degrees from the direction of the sun. So the part of the sky more towards the sun, you get forward scattering. The part of the sky which is opposite from the sun, uh, that is um, backward scattering. And with uh, Rayleigh scattering, uh, backward scattering is also strong. The weakest uh, Rayleigh scattering is light that is uh, perpendicular uh, to the sun's rays. The other type of scattering which occurs with uh, larger, uh, tiny but larger particles than Rayleigh scattering is me scattering. Now with me scattering, and that's a uh, typical of scattering in fog, uh, me scattering is strongest in the forward direction and weakest in the backward direction. Here's uh, an example that I uh, photographed in my backyard. So in this first example, you see some fog coming out of a um, clothes dryer. And uh, in this case, the photograph is taken with the fog between the sun and the camera. So this illumination of the fog, we are seeing it because we're seeing the forward scattering of sunlight towards the camera. Now I walk around to the other side and the uh, fog is much less visible because now uh, the sun is behind the camera and so uh, the light that we see scattered from the fog is uh, back, backward scattering and with me scattering, backward scattering is uh, much weaker. Now, it also makes a difference whether we're seeing a uh, single scattering, such as with very light fog, or if we have multiple uh, scattering uh, occurring so that uh, light rays don't just scatter once as they pass through the medium, but they, they scatter uh, many times. This is also common in subsurface scattering. We have 
multiple scattering. Uh, a nice way of illustrating this is to uh, have a fish tank with just a tiny bit of uh, milk to produce some scattering and shining a flashlight uh, on the side. So here you see a photo of that and we have a very um, dilute uh, solution. So we just have single scattering. Uh, so you see the beam from the flashlight is, is rather uh, narrow. Now when we add uh, more milk so that we have uh, more scattering going on, the that same flashlight, the beam is uh, significant, significantly brighter because we have more light that is being scattered. Uh, there's a hue shift uh, since in this case the uh, even though this is primarily me scattering there is a little bit of uh, Rayleigh Tyndall scattering and so there is a bit more blue light that's scattered out so we um, other side of the beam is, is a bit reddish. Uh, in this case the uh, there's also a halo that we see uh, around the beam and we can understand this uh, by looking at the two cases that the when we have single scattering we only see uh, light which is scattered directly uh, from the from the beam. On the other hand with multiple scattering we can have uh, light that's scattered out of the beam and then is scattered again and that's what we're seeing in this um, in this halo. Some of the light within the beam itself is also uh, multiply uh, scattered. Now you may have noticed, uh, here's the single scattering case again, you may have noticed that the beam seems to taper off in intensity and you might think that um, all of the light is being scattered out but if you look carefully you see that the back of the aquarium is brightly uh, illuminated. So why is it that the beam is so much brighter on the right side than on the left side? Well, this is simply due to the fact that uh, me scattering is more effective in the forward direction than in the backward direction. And so the part of the beam on the right, we're seeing forward scattering towards the camera, whereas the other side of the beam, uh, that light that's scattered is due to backward scattering and that is um, weaker than forward scattering for uh, me scattering. This uh, effect is also seen in uh, sun rays. So uh, you notice that these sun rays appear to taper off in intensity. Uh, the ground uh, where the rays are striking is quite bright. So it's not that these uh, rays are completely extinguished. Uh, this tapering off is due to the fact that where it's bright, we're mostly seeing forward scattering. Where it's not so bright, it's more backward scattering, weaker backward scattering. So in uh, summary, scattering is a deflection of light. Uh, absorption is an elimination of light and extinction is the combination of the two for transmitted light. Extinction exponentially reduces the intensity of transmitted light with distance. This is known as Beer's Law. So basically if you uh, have light that passes through uh, twice the distance of fog, it's going to be exponentially um, reduced by that effect. Uh, Extinction can lead to both cast shadows and form shadows. Rayleigh scattering is uh, strong in both the forward and backward directions and weaker to the sides. Whereas the more common uh, me scattering is strongest in the forward direction and weaker in the backward direction. And multiple scattering uh, makes uh, bright uh, diffuse beams. So that's the basics of scattering.